Audi says that in its revised form, this last of the line version of their third generation TT Coupe is a definitive expression of what this model line should be. It's certainly true that this car's now more desirable than it's ever been, and in this film, we're going to find out why. Here we are at the end of an era, the last version of the last design of Audi TT. People will remember this car, but will they also remember this final version of it? Time to check it out in coupe form. It's an improved version of the Type FV8S third generation design, first introduced back in 2014, which followed the second generation Type 8J model of 2006 and the iconic original Type 8N version of 1999. As with those designs, this one's available in both coupe and roadster forms, and we've chosen to test the hard top here. If you're already familiar with the Mark III TT, you'll find that not too much has changed. New badging, a little extra equipment, subtle aesthetic alterations plus some equally subtle differences in engine tuning. And that's about it. Not that there was much need to change things. Competition for the TT, particularly in this fixed top form, having evaporated like the morning mist during the model line's lifetime. Back at the turn of the century, the affordable coupe segment was populated by all kinds of volume brands. Vauxhall, Fiat, Nissan, Volkswagen, Renault, and subsequently Seat and Peugeot too. Now, they're all gone. Like Only coupes like the Toyota GT86, the Ford Mustang and the BMW 2 Series coupe remain. And they're really rather different cars to this Audi. All of which helps to explain not only why the modification programme was so light, but also why Audi has no immediate plans to replace this model, at least not in a form that TT owners would readily recognise anyway. The brand has shelved plans to create a family of TT body shapes that would have included a five-door sportback version. Instead, its resources are being directed towards the creation of an all-new electric sports car that will eventually replace this one. Either way, as as we said at the beginning, we're looking at the end of an era here, a milestone marked by the package of midterm updates we're going to talk about in this film. As part of this, Audi has distilled the TT down to the bits that really work and left us with, well, what? Let's find out. The TT has always been a relatively undemanding car to drive quickly. Well, almost always anyway. Back at the turn of the century, the very first model had a problem with lift-off oversteer, which led to a few customer crashes in the late 90s. These scared the Ingolstadt engineers so much that ever since, elaborate care has been taken to ensure that the TT's handling would be as fail-safe as possible. With that in mind, Audi's preference has always been to equip this car with Quattro four-wheel drive, and that setup's long been mandatory on more powerful variants like the TTS we're testing here. Since no other car in the segment offers the option of four driven wheels, that system, where fitted, gives this little coupe a unique calling card, especially for buyers in damper nations like ours. This revised version of the third generation model has a slightly different look to its engine lineup. There's no longer a diesel option, and the previous entry level 1.8 litre TFSI unit with 180 PS has been replaced by a 2 litre TFSI power plant with 197 PS that powers the new 40 TFSI entry level variant. That car, which makes 62 miles an hour from rest in 6.6 .6 seconds on the way to the 155 miles an hour top speed that all mainstream TT share, is only offered in front driven. S-Tronic Auto form, which is one of the reasons why most buyers prefer the more highly tuned version of this 2-litre unit that's found in the gutsier 45 TFSI version, an engine which puts out 245 PS. The 45 series model is the only TT in the range that can be had with manual transmission, but if you pay extra for the S-Tronic paddle shift auto box, you'll get the further option of Quattro four-wheel drive. The extra traction this delivers takes six tenths off the standard 45 TFSI S-Tronic variants, zero to 62 mile an hour sprint time of 5.8 seconds. Another reason the 45 TFSI version sells quite well is that it's short on really direct competition. 
Unfortunately for Audi, that's not the case for the faster TTS model we're testing here. To buy this performance variant, you've got to be able to walk away from deliciously desirable machinery priced almost identically. Cars like Porsche's 718 Cayman, Ford's Mustang V8, and the lovely Alpine A110. So, appropriately, this Audi has a few aces up its sleeve. Unlike with those rivals, adaptive damping is standard. And as just mentioned, you get the four-wheel drive system that they can't offer. So you'll be able to use more of the performance more of the time. 62 from rest in a TTS is dispatched in just four and a half seconds. Should that be not quite sufficient, the top TTRS flagship variant continues on at the top of the range with its two and a half litre five cylinder engine evoking memories of an 80s Audi Quattro and offering enough grunt, 400 PS, to get you from rest to 62 miles an hour in just 3.7 seconds en route to 174 miles an hour. Let's get to the engineering changes that Audi's made to the revised version of this third generation model. There aren't many. Across the range, a seven-speed version of the brand's twin-clutch S-Tronic auto transmission replaces the previous six-speeder. But probably the most significant news is that because of the addition of a petrol particulate filter to the engine of this TTS version, outright power output has fallen from 310 to 306 PS. But fear not, because at the same time, the engineers have tweaked this EA888 series unit to produce another 20 newton meters of pulling power, with the result that the 62 mile an hour benchmark is actually reached a tenth quicker than before. It's also pertinent to note that the standard Audi Drive Select driving modes system now influences the way the four-wheel drive system works, a setup that these days uses a Haldex-style all-wheel drive system. If your TT has Quattro fitted and you select Dynamic, more power is sent to the rear axle. Drive Select also has efficiency and comfort settings, plus Auto if you can't decide, and Individual if you want to tailor the way the various drive elements are influenced by each mode. These options alter steering feel, throttle response, air conditioning output, stability settings, and where fitted, the shift times of the S-Tronic Auto gearbox. Plus, your chosen setting also affects the engine note that's pumped into the cabin via the stereo speakers. If your TT has the clever Audi Magnetic Magnetic Ride adaptive damping system we mentioned earlier, standard only on the TTS and TTRS, the modes will affect ride quality too. Ah yes, ride quality. However you fiddle with the drive modes, it remains on the firm side of firm, particularly if, as here, you have a set of 20-inch wheels fitted. No doubt this matters little on Germany's billiard table smooth tarmac, but over here, it's annoying to have to feel every bump and ripple when all you want to do is ease back after the kind of day at the office that made it possible for you to buy a TT in the first place. Segment rivals like that Alpine A110 show that it doesn't have to be like this. Torque handling and fast cornering composure can be delivered without a setup that shakes your fillings out over potholes and speed humps. Another long-standing TT issue relates to steering feel. Audi's equipped this car with a progressive steering system that's supposed to require less effort for low-speed manoeuvring, which it does, at the same time as delivering a more dynamic response when cornering at speed, which it doesn't. If you can adjust to the rather anaesthetized feel, you'll actually feel that the rack is quite direct and becomes more so as the wheel is turned, allowing you to turn into corners with wheel bite and delivering impressively rapid cross-country journey times, whatever the season. This car remains superbly agile, aided by its exceptionally light weight. A base 40 TFSI variant weighs in 85 kilos lighter than a base Porsche 718 Cayman. That's a big difference. And refinement is excellent, spoiled only by a slight wind flutter around the frameless windows. As a result, a TT can be a perfect long-distance sports car. On a smooth highway, anyway. Ultimately, it's probably fair to say that this model line hasn't been quite as successful as Audi might once have hoped. Just over 605,000 TTs have been sold since the turn of the century, which is a reasonable figure, but not exceptional to have achieved over two decades of production. When it's gone, though, this is one of those cars we have a feeling that quite a few people will rather miss. Even now, there's nothing quite like it, as you'll discover if you try one.
You don't need to be a car enthusiast to recognise the looks of a TT. Audi's been careful to ensure that this model's iconic silhouette has remained essentially the same ever since we first saw it in 1999. The modern version's more up-to-date, third-generation take on that look appeared in both Coupe and Roadster form 15 years later, and it's been only lightly embellished as part of the changes made to create the revised model we're testing here. It's one of those cars you feel like you know before you even take a step towards it. So familiar are the TT styling cues. Look closely, though, and if you happen to be familiar with the original version of this Type FV8S Mark III model, you might note the minor changes Audi's made here. Perhaps the most significant alteration is this smarter, three-dimensional version of the single-frame radiator grille. As before, this forms the starting point for V-shaped contours that sweep back across the bonnet and is flanked by razor-sharp headlights, which as here can feature Audi's adaptive matrix technology. Further down, there are larger new vertical corner air inlets, though because they're blanked off, they don't actually admit any air. If you avoid base sport trim, there's this smarter full-width lower front splitter too. From the side, this could only be a TT. The rounded wheel arches, curved windscreen pillars, bold shoulder line and sloping rear tailgate are all recognisable features. As are these unique stirrup style door handles and this more powerfully sculpted lower door sill contour. Audi calls it the dynamic line that forms a light refracting edge and adds purpose to the car in profile. Plus, as ever with this model, you get this TT embossed fuel filler cap on the driver's side that opens with a light tap. Pull back the lid and there's no filler cap. Instead, the fuel nozzle is inserted directly into the tank neck, just like a race car. Detail changes from this perspective are limited to a revised portfolio of 18, 19 or, as in this case, 20-inch alloy wheel designs. At the rear, TT enthusiasts will note the addition of these fin-shaped flourishes below the tail lamps, which, in our view, rather spoil this area's previous styling purity, and perhaps also this remodelled lower diffuser, which incorporates two single-chromed pipes on 40 and 45 TFSI models, or two pairs of corner exhausts on this TTS or the top TTRS variant. Otherwise, the styling's unchanged, based around an interplay between light and shadow that intensifies around these strong horizontal lines that define both boot lid and bumper. On most models, that boot lid incorporates a neat spoiler that automatically extends at 74 miles an hour and retracts again at 43 miles an hour. And go for a top spec black edition TTS or the flagship RS model and that's replaced by a more prominent fixed rear spoiler. What's more important, of course, is the stuff you can't see. A structure that was described by one writer as a steel cake with an aluminium frosting. The allusion was to this car's so-called aluminium hybrid construction that uses steel underpinnings, basically the smallest version of the Volkswagen Group's latest MQB platform, allied to high-tech aluminium body panels. It's a good compromise solution, saving weight. This model easily tips the scales at under 1,300 kilos in base form, without making this car impossibly expensive for the Hungarian factory to produce. Historically, though, it's always been the TT's cabin that has been the most influential in selling this car to prospective buyers. Now, it looked good back in 2014, but interior designs moved on a lot since then. Does this Audi still set the class standard? In a word, yes, this Mark III model's clean sheet cabin design has aged so well that the Ingolstadt brand hasn't bothered to update it at all as part of the changes made here. If you weren't familiar with it before, you might get in and initially wonder what's missing. The wing-shaped dash is normal enough, but in its centre, the usual infotainment system screen and ventilation control panel are both missing, allowing for a sleek, minimalist design that continues to set this car's interior apart. Ventilation controls have been relocated to the jet turbine-style air vents, and almost no one ever thought of that before. And as an option, these can also house small digital displays which show the chosen setting. All the functions you'd normally find on a big tablet-style central display, meanwhile, have been incorporated into the 12.3-inch TFT virtual cockpit screen that replaces conventional instrument gauges.
quickly realised that though... You view it through the three aluminium look spokes of this flat-bottomed, leather-stitched sports steering wheel and quickly realise that though digital instrument clusters are now commonplace in modern car design, this one still sets the standard when it comes to clarity and ease of use. You'd think the screen would be somewhat overburdened, having to take care of sat-nav, audio and connectivity features, as well as the usual driving dials. Not a bit of it. That's thanks to the pair of viewing options Audi offers here. First, there's what they call the classic view, which gives you a prominent speedo and rev counter. Alternatively, you can select the infotainment view, which reduces the size of those dials so as to bring functions like this optional navigation map to the fore. Either way, infotainment functions can be dealt with by voice control, handled from the steering wheel buttons, or covered by fiddling with the touch-sensitive center MMI controller below Low the gear stick. Potentially, there's the option of tracing commands on the surface of this rotary dial with your fingertips. Some compensation, at least, for front seat passengers who will no longer have such control over what goes on in the cabin. This is a much wider area feeling place to sit than the cockpit you'd get in, say, a Porsche 718 Cayman or an Alpine A110. And it's easier to see out of than a Ford Mustang, though the standard rear parking sensors are an essential aid to manoeuvre ability. Drivers of almost every size will find it easy to get comfortable thanks to plenty of adjustment from the steering wheel and the supportive seat which in a neat touch incorporates a microphone in its integrated seat belt. This seat will feature either full leather or a leather and Alcantara combination, depending on your preference, and looks great with the quilted stitching that features here. The grippy super sport seats we've got here are standard, providing you avoid base sport trim. What else? Well, build quality and material quality is almost faultless and in another world from something like an Alpine or a Mustang. But the interior in its standard form could be said to be lacking a bit of character which is why it's helpful to be able to brighten it up in the way that this test car's interior has been. We've got shiny, bright Tango Red inlays here on the seat sides, the air vent perimeters and the center console area around the cup holder. Or you could choose either blue or orange finishes. A little less garish are the carbon inlays that you can add around the gear stick on the center console and on the door pulls. Provision for cabin storage isn't bad by sports car standards. This Sliding top conceals a cubby in front of the gear lever, which incorporates twin USBs, an aux in point, and if you've specified it, a wireless charging mat. A further box between the seats has coin slots, a 12 volt port, and a neat rotating cup holder frame. Another drinks holder sits just in front in an area incorporating a slot, but annoyingly, it's just a touch too small for your phone. What else? Well, the door bins are small, a ticket clip features only on the driver's side sun visor, and glove box space is mostly taken up with media kit. Audi's forgotten to include an overhead sunglasses compartment too. Something the brand could delete is the heartbeat sound effect this TT insists on delivering when you power off. Maybe there's a feature delete option buried away in the infotainment menu somewhere, but we haven't found it yet. You won't be expecting much from the rear seats and you shouldn't. They're really hard to get to for a start. First, because of the low roof line, and second, because the front seats don't automatically slide out of your way when you pull the backrest forward to gain access. It's not just the cramped roof line either. The Once you're inside, it's massively cramped to the point where these pews will be virtually unusable for adults, even on very short journeys. And it's not just the cramped roof line either. The seat backs in the rear are uncomfortably upright and there's virtually no legroom, even if the person up front has been accommodating. If taller folk do manage to cram themselves in the back here, there's also the rather dangerous issue of their heads potentially being clonked by the closing tailgate. Having said all of that, we're pleased that Audi has kept these chairs and not reverted to the kind of two-seat-only design you'd get in rival Mercedes or BMW sports car models. Many TT buyers do have families, after all, running one of these as a second or third car. And in that situation, having a back seat gives you options, even if only to run inebriated friends back from the pub. Seat back nets are provided and you get these little storage bins in 
in the sidewalls. Let's finish with a look at the boot. Now lift the tailgate and you'll find a two-part parcel shelf covering an unexpectedly large cargo area, something that's long been a selling point for TT owners. In this coupe model, it's 305 litres inside with the rear seats up. In the Roadster model, it's 280 litres. OK, the area provided is rather shallow, but it's accessed via a notably low loading lip. And what's on offer here is certainly big enough for three or four large bags. For the optional storage net, four tie-down points are provided, two of them body painted, and there's more space under this concertinaing boot floor, courtesy of the fact that no kind of spare wheel is offered. Audis remember to include a 12-volt port too. It's on this left-hand side wall. If you need more room, then flattening this 50-50 split folding rear backrest frees up a lot more of it, 712 litres to be exact. And it's a flat space with no annoying step in the extended boot floor. Audi reckons you could even slot a bike in here if you removed its front wheel first. Try doing that in any other little sports car. We're here today to look at the coupe version of this revised TT model. There's an alternative Roadster open top variant that sells at a premium in the 1,750 to 2,000 pound bracket, the amount varying depending on the version you choose. For coupe buyers looking in the more affordable section of the mainstream lineup, there's a choice of two versions of the two litre TFSI petrol engine. The 197 PS 40 TFSI, priced from just under 32,000 pounds at the time of this test, and the 245 PS 45 TFSI, which costs from around £33,500. Whichever car you favour, your trim level starting point is base sport trim, but your dealer will prevail upon you to find around £2,150 more for S-Line spec, or maybe even around £3,750 more for black edition trim. If you're looking in this part of the range, it's probably worth finding the extra £1,700 to upgrade yourself to the 45 TFSI, because that variant gives you more choice of engineering spec. Unlike the base 40 TFSI, you're not limited to S-Tronic transmission and front-wheel drive. 45 TFSI TT buyers can choose a front-driven manual model or spend around £1,500 more on an S-Tronic auto version, or find just under £3,500 more than the cost of a base manual derivative to get an S-Tronic auto variant with Quattro four-wheel drive. It's offered only the next step up in the TT hierarchy is to the TTS variant we're testing here, which uses an upgraded 306 PS 50 TFSI version of the same 2-litre petrol turbo engine. It's offered only with Quattro four-wheel drive and the S-Tronic gearbox and priced from around £45,000 in coupe form. You can upgrade your TTS to plusher black edition spec for an extra £2,200. If nothing but the ultimate TT will do, you'll need the top TT RS, which uses a 400 PS, 2.5 litre, five cylinder turbo, and at the time of this test cost around £54,000 in coupe form. Again, Quattro four wheel drive and S Tronic are non negotiable here. Another £4,000 will get you a TT RS in more dynamic looking Audi Sport form. Direct rivals for the Audi TT in any form are very thin on the ground, and none of the contenders that do exist are quite the same. Let's start by looking at competitors to the two most affordable mainstream models, starting with the base 40 TFSI S-Tronic. The most obvious rival to put against this Audi in its 197 PS entry-level guise is BMW's 2 Series Coupe in 184 HP 220i form, which will save you about £1,000. But that Munich model is a more practical, less emotive-looking thing. A purer sports coupe can be found in the form of the shared design badged either as a Toyota GT86 or a Subaru BRZ. A comparable auto version of one of those will save you two to three thousand pounds over the base version of this Audi. But inside you'll find classic Ingolstadt cabin quality sadly missing.
for around Shift your attention to the 45 TFSI with 245 PS, and rivals are harder to find. A BMW 230i Coupe M Sport costs about the same, but we've already commented on that car. For around £3,000 less, there's Nissan's 370Z. For around £4,500 more, there's the 2.3-litre EcoBoost version of Ford's Mustang Fastback. Both offer significantly more power than a TT45 TFSI. 290 PS in the case of the Ford, and at least 330 PS in the case of the Nissan. But because both are considerably heavier than a TT, they aren't much faster and cost considerably more to run. Plus, neither can be ordered with four-wheel drive. Let's now switch the focus to the TTS version we're testing here. Now, we've already said that you'll be looking at needing around £45,000 for one of these. This 306 PS variant's closest rivals both cost about the same. There's the Porsche 718 Cayman in its base 300 PS form, or there's the throbbing 5-litre V8 version of the Ford Mustang Fastback, which offers 450 PS at the same kind of price point, but which, because of its prodigious weight goes hardly any faster than a TTS. As for other options in the TTS's price and performance bracket, well, for around £5,000 less, you might want to look at a BMW M240i, which offers 340 PS and will save you around £5,000. Or for around £2,000 more, a TTS buyer might also consider the Alpine A110, which puts out only around 250 PS, but keeps up with this Audi thanks to its light weight. Again, none of the rivals we've mentioned can be ordered with the four-wheel drive system that's standard on a TTS. Finally, if you're considering blowing around £54,000 on the top TT RS with its 400 PS output, you'll probably also be looking at cars like the Porsche 718 Cayman S, which costs about the same, the BMW M2 Competition, which costs around £3,000 less, or the Mercedes AMG SLC 43, which costs around £6,000 thousand pound less but only comes with a metal folding roof for around sixty thousand pounds there's also the hand-built alfa romeo 4c though that car has just 240 ps again all the rivals just mentioned are two-wheel drive models that means features like if having considered all of that you conclude that it is a tt that you really want then you're going to need to know just how generous audi has been with the standard spec the answer is that most of what you'd want is included with base sport spec that means features like zen and headlamps with led daytime running lights 18 inch alloy wheels led rear lights an anti-theft alarm power folding heated mirrors rear parking sensors auto headlamps and wipers a retractable rear spoiler, the Audi Drive Select driving dynamic system, plus progressive steering and torque vectoring to sharpen corner turning. Inside, all sport spec models get leather and Alcantara trimmed height adjustable sport seats, aluminium inlays and also dimming rear view mirror, a keyless go stop start button, cruise control and manual air conditioning with controls built into the vents. There's also a three spoke leather trimmed flat bottomed sports steering wheel with multi function switches that provide one of the ways you can control the lovely 12.3 inch Audi virtual cockpit TFT instrument Pinnacle screen. The other route to infotainment functionality in a TT is via the MMI control panel down by the gear stick with its neat MMI touch rotary controller. Using all of this, you can Bluetooth link in your smartphone and access an eight speaker DAB audio system. Plus, you also get the Audi music interface, a CD player, and an AUX in point. To this tally, sportier S line spec variants add larger 19 inch alloy wheels, full LED. LED headlamps and the no-cost option of S-line suspension lowered by 10 millimeters. You also get a radiator grille finished in high gloss black, plus bespoke S-line bumpers, side skirts and a diffuser insert to complete the meaner look. Also thrown in are auto headlamps and wipers, LED dynamic rear indicator lights and embossed S-line super sport seats finished in Alcantara and leather and featuring electric lumbar support. As an option, we'd want the clever Audi magnetic ride system. 
system that works through the drive select setup to allow you to tailor the ride of your car to suit the road you're on and the mood you're in. That system comes as standard with this more potent TTS Quattro model, which comes complete with additional features like S design body styling, silver door mirror covers, and black brake calipers. Inside a TTS, there's Nappa leather upholstery for the seats, stainless steel pedals, and extra leather trim added around the cabin. And the virtual cockpit instrument screen features an additional sport display, providing information on engine output, torque, and G-forces. Plus, you get an upgraded 11-speaker Audi sound system and what Audi calls its technology pack. This incorporates the brand's hard disk-based MMI Navigation Plus setup, along with Audi phone box, wireless handset charging, and a three-year subscription to the many internet-based Audi Connect infotainment services. Opt for any of the various TT variants we've mentioned so far with top black edition spec and you get larger 20-inch wheels and the no-cost option of a fixed rear spoiler instead of the speed-dependent spoiler this coupe model normally features. With this plushest trim level, you also get privacy glass and a black styling pack which adds that colour to certain elements of the radiator grille and the bumpers. Inside, black edition spec entitles you to a smart chrome slate grey finish for selected interior elements. We'll finish our standard spec review with a look at the top TT RS. It gets an RS body styling kit, including a fixed rear wing, and a bespoke RS setup for the suspension, exhaust and brakes, plus RS specific interior trimming too, along with an extended leather package. There's also privacy glass and front parking sensors. A Ritzia TT RS Audi Sport Edition model adds larger 20 inch wheels, an RS sports exhaust system and interior carbon inlays. OK, enough with standard TT features. Let's now focus on extra cost options available across the range and the way you can create a bespoke specification for your TT. Well, we'll start with the driving stuff. We mentioned earlier that the Audi Magnetic Ride Adaptive Damping System should be a priority if your TT doesn't have it. You might also feel the same about the optional Matrix LED headlamps we've been trying here. These more powerful lights with their unique crystal-like shine feature 12 separate LED bulbs which dim individually when sensors detect oncoming or following traffic and automatically divert light around obstacles without the need to deactivate the high beam setting. As for other options, well, particularly popular features include front parking sensors, Audi's advanced key, keyless entry system, a reversing camera, and the brand's full house 680 watt Bang & Olufsen audio setup. All elements you can order either separately or as part of a combined comfort and sound pack. Other regularly ordered extras include headlamp washers, the full park assist setup that will automatically steer you into spaces, and electric seat adjustment, which comes with pneumatic backrest side bolster adjustment. We'd also want the lovely LED interior lighting package which gives the cabin a beautiful atmosphere at night. And we think that the TT's clever vent-based ventilation system really needs the deluxe automatic air conditioning option package added in which includes digital displays integrated into the controls. On a TT RS you can have a sports exhaust, a vehicle tracker and special high intensity OLED rear tail lamps too. What you can't have on any TT is any kind of optional head-up display system. Audi doesn't offer that, thinking perhaps that the virtual cockpit layout would make it unnecessary. If you're looking at a 40 or 45 TFSI model, you'll be missing a few key equipment items that feature further up the range, so you might want to add these things in. Things like the 11-speaker Audi sound system and the extra sport section of the virtual cockpit screen. Plus, with these two mainstream models, you'll have to pay extra for navigation and Audi phone box wireless charging mat and the useful suite of Audi Connect media services. Satnav wireless charging and Audi Connect can be packaged up as part of an optional technology pack. And if you go for this, you'll additionally have the opportunity to spend more on the Audi smartphone interface, which enables you to connect up to the infotainment system using either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone mirroring. 
The clever Audi Connect system is worth telling you a bit more about, a data transmission module that lets the driver network with the internet, infrastructure and other vehicles. The central component here is mobile phone preparation. The Connect setup will seamlessly interface with your mobile to provide an internet connection and allow passengers to conveniently surf and email with up to eight mobile devices via an integrated WLAN hotspot. This brings features such as navigation with images from Google Earth, Google points of interest search by voice control and Google Street View. Connect also adds the Audi Music Stream system with web radio plus access to social media services such as Facebook and Twitter. There's also Audi online traffic information that takes the movement data from the thousands of smartphones and navigation units that are traveling on the road and can inform you of average speeds, predicted journey times and recommended reroutes. Watch your roaming charges though if you're using it abroad. Finally, there are exterior aesthetics to consider. Now, unless you want your TT with Audi's Ibis White or Brilliant Black solid paintwork, you'll need to be paying your dealer more for one of the extra cost metallic shades. We've got Turbo Blue here, or even one of the pricey exclusive colors. There's a range of 18, 19 and 20 inch alloy wheel rims into which you can add red brake calipers on request. And you can specify privacy glass if the variant you've chosen doesn't have it. As for the cabin, well, there are black or grey leather finishes for the seats, with or without stitching, or if you're feeling extrovert, even a bright express red leather upholstery package. You can also smarten up the interior by adding in one of the brand's optional RS styling packages, available in either turbo blue or, as here, in tango red. These use the requested colour to trim the inner rings of the air vents, the outer edges of the seat belts and the floor mats. Get each pack in its extended form and the colour in question will also feature on the side seat trims and in highlighted trimming areas around the centre console. An orange interior highlights pack is also available. On this particular car, optional carbon trim inlays have also been added to the door pulls and the area around the gear stick. On to safety. Now this car's provenance as one of Audi's older designs is portrayed by the fact that it's relatively short on modern tech. There's no autonomous braking system available, even as an option, which is why this car scored only four out of five stars in Euro NCAP testing. Mind you, you can't have that with a Porsche 718 Cayman, a Ford Mustang or a Nissan 370Z either. Avoid the base 40T FSI model though, and you do get Audi Active Lane Assist, which works between 37 and 155 miles an hour to stop dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway. Plus, we should also mention that high beam assist, which automatically dips your headlamps at night in the face of oncoming traffic, is standard, providing you avoid base sport trim. The other two available camera-driven safety systems on this TT are optional. The first is Audi Side Assist, a blind spot monitoring system to stop drivers from dangerously pulling out to overtake in front of another car. And the second is Dynamic Road Sign Display, a traffic sign recognition system that pictures road signs as you pass them and displays them on the dash. You'll also pay extra for a tyre pressure monitoring system, though a tyre pressure loss indicator is standard as is driver rest recommendation technology that assesses your driving style and will issue a warning if it detects a decline in attentiveness. What about other safety features fitted as standard across the TT range? Well, you can tick off the expected stuff like the usual electronic assistance for braking and traction and twin front side and curtain airbags, though there are no driver's need bags. There's hill start assist and ESC stability control too, with a special interim sport mode that gives you a little more leeway to play with, but cuts in if ambition gets the better of your talent, which is good to know. Efficiency is a fundamental part of the DNA of this car and a key reason for the aluminium hybrid construction that lightened this Mark III model by around 50 kilos in comparison to its pre-2014 Mark II predecessor. As a result, a base TT40 TFSI weighs just 1,250 kilos, 85 less than a Porsche 718 Cayman, and over 400 kilos lighter than a base Ford Mustang Fastback. All this explains why this third generation TT remains so cost effective to run, even though Audi no longer offers it in diesel form.
Let's get to the figures for the TT Coupe, which, as usual, will quote with WLTP-rated stats for economy and NEDC-rated figures for CO2. These see the 40 TFSI return up to 40.9 mpg on the combined cycle and 138 grams per kilometre of CO2 in front-driven S-tronic form, the only variant available. Switch to the 45 TFSI and you're looking at up to 39.8 mpg and 150 grams per kilometre for the manual and up to 39.2 mpg and 147 grams per kilometre for the S-tronic auto and up to 35.3 mpg and 160 grams per kilometre for the S-tronic quattro. This TTS Quattro S-Tronic manages up to 35.3 mpg and 161 grams per kilometre. And the top TTRS Quattro S-Tronic returns 31 mpg and 181 grams per kilometre. Of course, light weight isn't the only reason why these figures are class leading. The EU 60 temp compliant engines now feature a petrol particulate filter for reduced exhaust emissions. And intelligent thermal management with rotary valve control ensures the optimum balance between minimal friction and high thermodynamic efficiency. Plus, the curvy bodywork achieves a slippery 0.29 CD drag coefficient, and the S Tronic Auto features a fuel saving free wheeling function activated when the drive select vehicle dynamic system is set in its efficiency mode and you come off the accelerator. On top of that there's brake energy recuperation which recycles energy you'd otherwise lose when braking or cruising and a very effective stop start system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. On to residual values. Now these tend to be strong on any Audi, but particularly so when it comes to the TT. Independent experts cap monitor reckon that after the usual three year or 60,000 mile ownership period, a TT45 TFSI Sport Coupe S-Tronic Quattro model will retain 40.1% of its original value. Marginally better than a comparable BMW Z4 S-Drive 30i Sport Auto. As for this TTS Coupe Quattro model, the residual value after the same period would be 43.1%. That's some way behind a rival Porsche 718 Cayman PDK at 52.2%, but it's marginally better than you get from a BMW Z4 M40i at 39.9%. What else? Well, there's an energy consumers section on the dash display that shows you which cabin elements are drawing upon running cost efficiency and a servicing section too, telling you when the next garage visit's due. On the subject of regular maintenance, service intervals are up to 19,000 miles or two years on the default variable regime for all TT models. Overall maintenance costs can be kept down if you go for one of the prepaid servicing plans you'll be offered at initial purchase, which can cover you up to a maximum of five years and 90,000 miles. You may also be interested to know that this car can even book its own service appointments via an Audi Connect safety and service system app, as well as providing emergency calling and online roadside assistance. This feature can, at the appropriate time, send a service request direct to your local dealer. Alternatively, you can sign up for Audi Service Request, which uses the onboard Wi-Fi to enable your car to communicate with the dealer. As your TT nears the time when work will be needed, the diagnostics alert your nominated local Audi Centre will then contact you to book in a convenient time. Another neat service your dealer can offer you is the so-called AudiCam system. Here, technicians carrying out workshop inspections on your TT can focus a handheld AudiCam camera on specific problems, accompanying the image with a verbal diagnosis to create footage that can be sent to your computer or smartphone. That way, you'll know precisely what work you're authorising on your car. On to insurance groups. Now, for the base 40 TFSI, it's Group 35E for Sport Trim or Group 38E for S-Line or Black Edition Spec. For two-wheel drive manual or S-Tronic 45 TFSI variants, it's Group 37E for Sport Trim or 40E for S-Line or Black Edition Spec. For the 45 TFSI S-Tronic Quattro variant, it's Group 39E for Sport Trim or 41E for S-Line or Black Edition Spec. For this TTS, you're looking at Group 42E, while for the TTRS models, it's Group 46E. 
We'll finish by covering the warranty. And most cars in this class get three years of cover, but whereas rival brands BMW and Mercedes don't limit your mileage in this period, Audi rather meanly restricts you to 60,000 miles. Optional extra cost packages can extend the cover to either four or five years. Some say the Audi TT won't be missed when this third generation model eventually ends production. But we disagree. Even when the affordable coupe segment was full of volume branded rivals, the TT stood out as something a little special and different. In this lightly revised form, the Mark III design still does. Of course, if you didn't want one before, nothing's been done as part of this midterm revamp that will be particularly effective in changing your mind. But if you were previously wavering, the updates made here, combined with the news that the current TT's days are numbered, could be enough to get you into the driver's seat. Well, you'll find a slightly more engaging driving experience and a simpler set of buying options. As for issues, well, they remain pretty much as they were before. The TT's appeal to loyal buyers is that it's so everyday usable and easy to transition into from an ordinary family car. But by the same token, that creates a car that's less involving and less of an occasion to drive than, say, something like a Mustang, even if you go for this performance orientated TTS variant. Really powerful versions like this and the top. TTRS derivatives are difficult to justify against similarly priced Porsche 718 Cayman models too, unless you really value the Audi's inclusion of Quattro four-wheel drive. Ultimately though, there's still nothing quite like a TT, and perhaps there never will be. <laughs>